Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 206 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, August the 30th, Holy. 2011. You know what that means. It's almost Don't September. Say Don't say it. I started putting up mm. like fall sale websites and stuff. Oh, that's like the, the kicker right I, there. I do some websites for schools and we're mm-hmm. like, here's the fall curriculum and welcome back mm. and it's like oh. did you get all your back to school stuff yes i got an e-set pen yay i'm done with school <laughs> my daughter is six we have no idea what she needs i was going to send her with oh. a pad of paper and a pencil and a nice backpack there's lots of she has a lovely backpack mm. and we've been Markers. fortunate enough at least to this point to to let her like she's still at the point where she appreciates the things that she has it's a beautiful thing Hmm. so it's not like we don't need to change backpacks every six months fun that happens when you're young and when you're in like grade 11 12 although she did say to me recently because she's got tons and tons of silly bands she said daddy uh, this is out of the blue daddy i i liked silly bands but now i don't like them anymore (laughs) because i have too many of them oh I don't so, know what silly bands are. Really? They're like, they're <laughs> elastics that you wear around your wrist, that kids wear around their wrist. And they're shaped in silly shapes, like ah. snowmen and stars and happy faces. Huh. So anyway, huh. that's my story. That's so she's, she's beyond silly bands story. now. Um, so don't send silly bands. Just uh, how oh, she's she collecting pet shops. Them. She's got so many pet shops. It's ridiculous. That's totally good. untech related. Yeah. That's good. What do we got going on tonight? You've got lots of news coming up. Uh, I have an iPod uh, Touch dock that I picked up this <gasps> week that I wanted to show you. Kind of uh, still a little bit excited about that. Tonight we're going to find out the name of Space Fish. Space Fish. Dun, Space dun, dun. Fish. Cool. There's his tail. Oh, he's alive. <laughs> Wonderful. You can win a pogo plug. And 300 viewer points if you submitted a space fish name. Hopefully you were able to get on this week and vote, vote, vote. Did you vote? I did. I did. I voted as often as possible. I actually... Can I ask that? It's like it's like at an election time. Is it appropriate I know, but it, for me it's to say, already who passed. did you vote for? Like, the votes are in, right? So I can't yes. actually sway anybody's votes. I was actually voting for C3H2O. Oh. Not I liked always it. in space. No. Oh. Come on. No, I'm a that bit of a, cool. a Star Wars geek. C three H two O. Yeah, like C three P O. Yeah, yeah kind of like that, but with water at the end. Mm-hmm. So I voted Ooh. for that. What else we got coming up? Uh, we're going to be learning how to install Windows only, Windows only hmm. applications on Linux. So stick around. We're going to be talking all about that, uh, and also we have a click race tonight. Um, so if all goes well, wink, wink. We actually have a click race tonight, yeah, right? We're, we're, right? that's the plan. So be ready to click race. <laughs> uh, and uh, that, of course, is going to result in another uh, user walking away with a pogo plug. We're going to talk more about pogo plugs in just a minute. What do you have coming up in the news? Oh, my goodness. I have all sorts of amazing, wonderful things you will not believe. She always makes it sound so exciting. That's because I have to build up at the beginning so I don't right. She's like, break I, down actually, laughing in I'm the middle of it. I'm actually switching the screen over <laughs> to the appropriate screen, but in the meantime, I'll make it sound really exciting. And that too. And now that. you just ruined the aura of it. So I'm going to try that though. Next question, as I'm as I'm looking it up on Google, I'll be like, I you just have an fill your sentences with adjectives you. in your. I have a fantastic okay. answer. So in the news. In the news. <laughs> Oh, the Department of Defense in Australia are putting a push on the use of open source software in government agencies, Ooh. agencies rather. Raspberry Pi, the $25 all-in-one Linux motherboard powered by the, the ARM, 
or ARM, ARM? processor, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was demonstrated running Quake 3. A government mm-hmm. attorney has unveiled that Google CEO knew about the illegal pharmacy ads running on its site. <gasps> oh no. Really? Microsoft has signed an agreement to bring Linux compatible cloud computing to China. Nokia's developer forums were hacked and it looks like all the user data was compromised. Apple's future is uncertain as CEO Steve Jobs steps down from his position. Stick around. These stories are coming up in under 30 minutes. We've got lots of viewer uh, testimonials this week. I was pleased to see some that, uh, that have come out. Uh, but first, I've got a viewer picture that was submitted by Invincible Mutant who says, here he is uh, watching Category 5 TV by the Rubicon or Rubicon. I don't know. It's a soda brand that we don't have here in mm. Canada. I don't recognize it. Do you? I don't. It, R- Rubicon? Uh, anyways, it's a Rubicon Mountain on the kitchen desk, and here he is uh, watching Category 5 Technology TV with that. Aren't How you scared cool? it's going to tip over yeah, onto like your computer? fall onto your computer and, like, crack your display? It's dangerous. Yeah. You are living on the edge. You are a dangerous, dangerous man. I will give you 100 viewer points for that. Uh, and I'd like to bring up our website, Category5.tv. Thanks for submitting that, Invincible Mutant. Uh, I'd like to bring up our website and see uh, what viewer testimonials have come in uh, over the past little while. We haven't looked at viewer testimonials in a while. Hey, everybody. Chris Reich, Agamotto. Gpop7, Greg in Texas, Troy74, Dog. It's great to see you during a live show. It's been a while. Old Guy Jim, nice to see you. Okay, so over on our website, category5.tv, if you point to interact and then viewer testimonials, you'll be able to submit your own, which I encourage you to do. Uh, that's kind of a, yeah, it's a nice way to encourage us. And before I say, before we get into viewer testimonials, I'll just say we, one of the things I've noticed is that snail mail has really tapered off. Like we don't ever, mm. we don't get any postcards recently. And I think because we don't that's really push bad. for it. Yeah, so I would be happy to encourage you with some viewer points if you want to grab a, a postcard from your local convenience store and uh, and send it our way. Like something that has a picture of, of your area. Uh, we'd love to receive a postcard with uh, a little bit of a, you know, spiel on the back about uh, about your, your area. Maybe tell us about where you live. That mm-hmm. would be very cool. Uh, let's see. I've got one here from Old Guy Jim, actually, who, uh, who writes us on our website, category5.tv. So simply put, the Category 5 crew, past, present, and future, are providing a wonderful service to the worldwide community. I've learned more in the few episodes that I've seen uh, than I have in books that I've read on the subject of Linux. Uh, I'm starting to view past episodes at this point. While I learn best by doing, I'm not a great hacker, so you have been very helpful already. I've already found nuggets of gold in the chat room. Thank you, not just to you, but also to the viewers in the chat room. That comes from Old Guy Jim, who joins us from Hampton, Virginia, and is joining us in the chat room tonight. Thank you, Old Guy Jim. It's uh, it's a pleasure to have you as a part of our Category 5 community, and uh, so nice of you to submit a viewer testimonial as well. What are you thinking? Do you want to bring up I some viewer am, testimonials, uh, yeah. too? And I'll, I'll let you uh, help me chip through these. I've got uh, Joe Cool who, uh, who join, joins us from Texas in the U.S., and uh, Joe says, Category 5 Technology TV is the cat pajamas. <laughs> pajamas. I have to say it both ways so that Chris Reich will be happy. Uh, there are very few podcasts out there that can deliver uh, important information and keep you laughing at the same time, all while actually learning something new, if it be Ubuntu, Macintosh, or even Windows. How did, how did Mac get in there? Oh, I think it's just sneaking its, <laughs> it's way in. It's her fault. It's her fault. Mm-hmm. Here is some special karma for you, your family, and all of the viewers out there on the big blue marble. Cheers, and thanks again from Joe. Thank you very much for the, uh, the viewer testimonial there. I'm working my way up the list. Up the list, here, okay. Yeah. So I'm currently at uh, Invincible Mutants from August 17th. 17th. I see it. Yeah. All right. Do you want to go for that? Sure, I will give her. All right, so Invincible Mutants says, congratulations for the new server. Your show is really getting better mm. and better in terms of quality with it. We're pretty excited about the new server. Yeah, cheers. Mm-hmm. We all see your effort keeping Category 5 TV alive. And thanks to the crew for their endless support. We have seen Hillary and Krista away from shows sometimes, but not Robbie. That's true. He mm. works constantly. constantly. I think, <laughs> I think Robbie, <laughs> did I say it wrong? 
I said constant, constantly. I thought you were making. No, no, I wasn't making. I was oh. just saying constantly. Like, oh, yep, just I'm agreeing. always mm-hmm. always working. I know. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> just making sure. Just agreeing. Says I think Robbie should tell the crowd what makes Robbie so determined and dedicated. Aww. You have earned some unprecedented respect in this. I think. I'm sorry I couldn't help much right now financially as a postgraduate, but I am definitely behind you. I think helping you to cheer up the community with, with interesting materials, that is what I can do right now to show my support. Keep it up. Excellent. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for that, uh, Invincible Mutant. Um, and uh, yeah, what uh, what what keeps me going with the show? And and I think I really appreciate one of the comments that you made there, Invincible Mutant, that I really appreciate is uh, commenting that you know we're pressing on even with without the new server. Um, cause I get a lot of email and, and sometimes it, it can get discouraging when I do get email from people who just don't know people who weren't here mm-hmm. when the server got hit by lightning. And so they don't understand that we are literally flying at half mast right now. So when, if you're, if you're new to the show and you, and you wonder why we do some of the things ha- half mast, if, if you, if you wonder that, uh, we are operating with, basically interim hardware until we get there so invincible mutant it means a lot that you that you see the dedication that's gone into just keeping the show going through this rather challenging time of of not having a proper uh, broadcast system appreciate that so what what keeps me going uh and that's simply the community and and knowing that uh, there's a small part of me that that just knows that we can make a difference here and that's i think that's why we all Mm -hmm. kind of volunteer doing the show is um just for the community you have questions and we try to have answers and hopefully we give you some uh, some education and some fun at the same time and it sounds like we have so thank you very much are you ready for another one <gasps> am i ever from auckland <laughs> pardon me auckland new zealand <laughs> Yeah, from Bennett Smeaton. Hey, Bennett. He says, the image is of me watching Category 5 on my laptop in my bedroom. And there's a little oh, picture there right beside it. That. There it is. Okay. Excellent. Category 5. Oh, we're going to have to give Bennett a uh, 100 viewer points. Cool. It says, I got the HP touchpad for 132 NZ. What's that? Uh, is that like a... A New Zealand, New Zealand dollars? dollars? <laughs> $132 New Zealand. I got it. Okay. From my work. It's a great tablet, but the software could be better. They have said they will continue to support the software. I'm finding a way to watch Category 5 on the tablet as well, but I am waiting for Android to be brought to it as there is a reward of about two hundred or sorry, $2,250 US wow. to the first people to port it over. Whew. Isn't that interesting? I, I was kind of thinking that hackers would kind of reverse engineer things and mm-hmm. and start porting different distributions to the the tablet uh, the thinkpad but interesting that there there's Very actually cool. an incentive so hey get porting people mm-hmm. it says i use android on my samsung galaxy ace and it is so much better thanks for the great show keep up the good work yeah awesome cheers. thanks bennett thank you so much and like i say i'll give you 100 viewer points for that as well uh, for sending in a picture along with uh, your testimonial. Mm-hmm. We'd love to have you submit a viewer testimonial. All you have to do is visit category5.tv, click on Interact, and uh, you'll see the uh, viewer testimonials there. And you can go submit your own. Cool. Nice to see everyone in the chat room. You remember last week. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> like it was 23 <laughs> minutes ago. Last mm. week we had uh, what we expected was some rather substantial video lag. Do you want to mm-hmm. know how much video lag there actually was? I do actually know. Do you know? Yes. You was read? I did. I was reading things. Okay. Tell Should the I viewers. act surprised? So remember last week, if you were watching on the RSS feeds and things, you may have been like, well, why is nobody calling in? That seems weird. There's so many viewers. Well, why is nobody picking mm-hmm. up the phone? Is that well, no one like Why is nobody? Well, that crossed my mind. You know, well, what did I do today mm-hmm. to, to make them Chris off. Reich so angry? that he would not even pick up the phone and call us. Mm -hmm. So anyways, video lag of... 23 minutes. 23 minutes. That's insane. It's incredible. We're used to a maximum video lag of about 10 seconds. So if we do a contest, if we say, Mm -hmm. call us up, 10 seconds later, the phone starts ringing. Easy. If uh, what, what happened last week is we said, call us up, 23 minutes later, you heard that live. Mm-hmm. There was that much delay. 
And unfortunately, we didn't realize at the time because it's one of those things when you're live, it's hard to uh, to know that there's that kind of a lag and people in the chat room were carrying on with their conversations it was weird because nothing that we yeah. were saying was actually happening in the <laughs> chat room asking a question oh does nobody have a question in the chat room yeah and then 23 minutes 23 later 23 minutes later so yes questions. i have a question why aren't you answering me <laughs> i'm sorry everyone if you felt a little mm -hmm. like we were ignoring you last week it's because we were in a time capsule 23 minutes into your past D Man 810 mm. was clicking away at Click Race for 23 minutes. I know. <laughs> good for you, my friend. At least good you're all you. practiced up, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Got so an what advantage. We're what I thought we would do tonight is an interesting way to test, to make sure that we are ready to receive your calls tonight, to make mm. sure that we are ready to have you participate in Click Race and win a pogo plug. So, what I want you to do in the chat room, category5.tv or category5 on Freenode, is type this. Don't press enter. Don't send this to the chat room yet, okay? I'm going to bring up the chat room. You're going to type the word Mark, M-A-R-K, space, dash, and then the name of your city, your state, your province, your country, whatever you want to do, just so we know where you're from. Don't send that to the chat room yet. I'm going to send one to the chat room just so you can see what I expect it to look like. This is how you qualify. So if you're watching the chat room, you see co-host has said Mark Dash Barry Ontario. Okay, so be ready to send that. The chat room goes silent. Hmm. And in eight seconds, we're going to send that. All right, ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Hit enter. Our first one is in oh, from Greensville. <laughs> Five seconds lag. Thanks, everybody. So I've got 25 viewer points for everyone who participated in that little test. We have uh, less than five seconds lag tonight. We are ready <laughs> to have contests, give away pogo plugs. Great. It's <laughs> so a part of me that was a little nervous going into that because last week was so bad with the video lag. We don't know what it was. It could have been internet. It could have been Justin.tv still coming in. So let's, uh, let's take a look at where, uh, where some of these people are from. We've got... So the first one in was uh, Greensville, South Carolina. R.D. Street's joining us. Uh, Pristina, Kosovo. Alket is joining us from Kosovo. Thank you for joining us tonight. Chicago, Illinois, we've got uh, G-Pop7. If you want to hit some of these as well, are you? do you see those on your screen? I see them all. We've then got we annoyance. have Annoyance. He's in Lawrenceville, G.A. Where's G.A.? Sorry, I'm horrible with my... What is G.A., guys? <laughs> uh, jo that's not Georgia, is it? We've got uh, Chris Reich who joins us from Rochester, New York. It is Georgia. Okay. Georgia. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. I'm glad I was right because I always feel bad if I don't know my geography too well. I'm horrible at or geography. Or short forms. So. Uh, we've got, uh, who did we miss? We've got Rye Burke joining us from Millen, uh, Georgia as well. Lots of viewers from Georgia. We've mm. got uh, D-Man 810 from Grand Blanc, Michigan. Uh, we've got Westland, Michigan. Uh, Smitty Smith joining us. Old Guy Jim from Hampton. We've got Gadwill in Virginia. Greg in Texas from... Texas. Texas. <laughs> Raffer from Lilienthal Nien Niedersech. You say. Uh huh. Oh, so I look like the fool. I'm sorry. How? Lilienthal Niedersech. I really should have left that to her, Sachsen. Raffer. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> I I presume that you're 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 from far away. <laughs> it's really nice to have you here. Uh, Beningitis from Auckland, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. We've got Troy seventy four from Merritt. Uh, we've Very got cool. uh, Sprint Cowboy joining us from Indiana. Yazid, 1965, Clifton, New Jersey. Like, just all over the place, eh? Wow. Thanks, yeah, everybody. there's not very many people from the same place. If I, didn't mention, scattered. if I didn't mention you, it means that you had more than nine seconds of lag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome, Sorry. everybody who's joining us. <laughs> that was just within the first nine seconds, uh, those, those people. Uh, so four seconds of coverage there. Hey, Raffer. All right. So, we are cool. good to go. All right. We've got batteries to give away, my friends. Cat5.tv slash eco uh, slash free batteries, pardon me, is, is where the contest is found. 
Uh, we are giving away a year supply of Eco Alkalines batteries. That's these amazing. Are, yeah, these are eco-friendly batteries. Uh, they are carbon neutral. The company uh, that uh, that manufactures them uh, goes through the whole process of making sure that the batteries are carbon neutral. They use recycled uh, recycled product to manufacture the batteries. The packaging is recycled. It's just they, they put a good solid effort into making these uh, eco-friendly. That said, they're fantastic batteries. They work mm-hmm. really well. Um, they last longer than uh, than even, uh, and I don't like to say brands, mm-hmm. just because I don't know who's watching, and I don't want anybody to uh, to say, "Hey, get offended," you know, or, you know. <laughs> yeah, you hear about all the lawsuits that go on and stuff. And anyways, you know the major brands; these guys, Eco Alkalines, perform better than uh, than most major leading brands. They last just as long. They perform just as well. Uh, they're fantastic batteries. So. And I'm using these. Uh, these are the official batteries of Category 5 TV, and we'd like to give you a year supply. Go to cat5.tv slash free batteries, and that's going to tell you all about how you can mm-hmm. uh, actually qualify to win a year supply of Eco Alkalines. Uh, all the details are there. Check it out. Cat5.tv slash free batteries. And, uh, and I encourage you to do so. Uh, anytime we do a contest like this, I, I've mentioned it before, you know, when we have banner ads on our website and stuff. If something catches your eye and something is of interest to you, click on it. We all need batteries. We all care about the environment and, and want uh, the earth to be here for our, our children, our grandchildren, and our children's children, and children's mm-hmm. children's children. And so, you know, there, there's... Go over there, cat5.tv slash free batteries, and, and just participate in the contest. Remember, these are a sponsor as well, so every person who uh, who participates in the contest, it uh, it helps us out as well. So, But fantastic product, and... Uh, I'm really looking forward to giving those away at the end of September uh, because mm-hmm. somebody is going to get them. I should mention, too, we're going to ship those anywhere in the world. So, so it, it doesn't, doesn't matter where you are. Even if you're Raffer or who, <laughs> whoever, anywhere you are, we're going to be uh, we're gonna be sending out A. Jameson, 5579. Can you sing him a song? No, I'm sorry. Andrew, <laughs> it's so nice to have you here, my friend. So mm-hmm. good to have you here. See, Robbie's the singer. And that was not how I sang. <laughs> He's in the chat room feeling, oh, he didn't say my name. He didn't <laughs> give me any kudos. Nice Aww. to have you here, my man. Anyways, cool. Mm-hmm. The iPod Touch dock that I picked up. Yes. I have been shopping around. We, I, I've had an iPod Touch for a while. Mm-hmm. And you just used to have that little sit thingy there. Yeah, I'll show plastic. you what I had. This is what I had. Because I went into the store and I said, okay, well, if I want to watch video on on the iPod Touch, Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking Category 5 and being able to test stuff for the viewers and stuff Mm -hmm. so that I can make sure that it's compatible. And so they gave me this, and it didn't cost me anything. Well, I hope hope not. No, it's like like a little cheap plexi thing that (laughs) you just kind of set your iPod on, and Mm. it would work with an iPhone or whatever. We've broken it once. Like it came apart on the air and shattered everything. Anyways, it's nothing fancy. This particular one does not include Bluetooth. No. It does not have a speaker system or video output. It does not have audio in or a wow. built-in volume control. And the other disappointing about uh, mm. thing about this particular iPod dock is that it does not charge my battery oh. as I use it. Wow. Why did you purchase that? Well, this is, this is the one I got for free, see? This is not <laughs> the dock that I bought this week, my friends. The reason I want to show you this is because shopping around really makes a difference. I, I just I picked up. A cheap dock. But here's the thing. I've been looking for one for a while. Mm-hmm. It's been two months. Okay. And doing so your research. When I was at the cottage, so I did episode number 202 from the cottage, and while I was there, I, I stopped into the local e- electronics dealer and everything, mm-hmm. and they had one for $150. It was compatible with the third gen down. Mm-hmm. I think this is one of the problems that we run into with the Apple devices is they're constantly... They upgrade so fast. <laughs> but when they do so, they make them not backward compatible mm-hmm. entirely so yeah. in a case with the docking st- station for example it does have a universal dock so it mm-hmm. will allow me to play through the speakers but it won't charge my ipod right right so mm-hmm. that's the problem that you run into so i decided against that because you know what i really want it to be able to charge my ipod what's the point if i come home from work and the battery's got only 20 percent life left in it which you know because it annoys you all the time wish you could turn that off mm. but um so I wanted something that would charge it. So the, you have to get one that has fourth-gen compatibility. 
go to any store, it was 150 bucks, 150 bucks, 120 bucks, and really not that exceptional. So finally, I found one that was 100 bucks, and I was like, it's compatible with the iPod Touch 4. It's got built-in Good. speakers. It's going to charge it. It's it's a decent enough platform. Mm-hmm. But that's all it is. It's literally just a set of speakers and a charger, right? I came across this one. It was it was fifty bucks. Okay, so I picked it up. Just like looked at the box because it's fifty bucks. Okay, that's that's cool. It can't possibly be uh, fourth gen compatible. And I'm not going to tell you. Don't worry about the brand and what it is and stuff. It's just a it's just a cheap brand, but it is compatible with the i iPod Touch and iPhone 4th Gen. You can tell that by the diagram on the side. So, of course, okay, well, I'll read a little bit further. It's got speakers, it's got the charging cradle, Mm -hmm. it's got a volume control, but here's the kicker that really got me, is that it's got composite video output. No. Yes. (laughs) So when you plug your iPhone or your iPod Touch into that, Mm -hmm. not only do you get the charger and the speakers, but you also get the the benefit of that $40 cable that you could buy separately to allow you to watch watch your shows from your iPod or Mm -hmm. iPhone on the TV. Mm. So for me, it's like, that's brilliant. We've got a pogo plug, so all of our our family movies and stuff are on there, so we can use the pogo plug to stream the video to this, Mm -hmm. plug in the dock, and it's hooked up to the TV, right? So it's it's a decent little thing, and it it works well. It sounds good for 50 bucks. Hmm. So I don't care about the brand. I don't care what it is. Everyone's going to say, well, where'd you get it? What is it? How can I order one? All I'm saying is shop around. Don't settle because there are there are things out there mm-hmm. that uh, you know I'd encourage you to, to find and understand the uh, the specs. I think that's a, a challenge for for you if you don't understand that. Hey, yeah, my I- iPod Touch four or iPhone four will work with an iPod three dock, but it won't charge. If you don't know that, you might not understand that, and you you might get into a bind. So, uh, good to do your research, find out, get into a community like Category Five, and uh, and ask. Um, what uh, what what you should buy? You know, purchase decisions. Regardless of this, is just an example. But uh, cool. So I was pretty pleased with that. It's neat too. It's got an alarm clock app. And oh, I wake, okay. I so. woke up to. I'm used to waking up to the iPod, um, like I, iOS mm-hmm. sounds, which is kind of annoying. Yeah. You know. So I woke up to uh, birds Music? chirping. Oh. Birds you can chirping. Ch- choose whatever really you want. Nice. I imagine. Yeah, hmm. and it's all included with the app. So Very cool. Cool stuff. No big whoop, but I just wanted to tell you. We're here for you if you want to make some purchase decisions. It's pretty cool. Uh, quick lag check. Ready with your mark? We're going to do a quick lag check as well for Andrew Jameson. He just wants to be involved. That's all. <laughs> We've got Space Fish that we're going to be giving out a name for in just a moment here. And uh, lag check in 10 seconds. Get your mark ready. Five, so exciting. Four, three, two, one, mark. Hit enter. So, four awesome. seconds. So, no problems, Andrew Jameson. Thank you very much. Okay. We had a, a number of great submissions for space fish, uh, space fish names. There's space fish at the bottom of the tank there. And, uh, he, he needed a name beyond Desperately. Space Fish. You can't just call him Space Fish for the rest of his life. I wanted Bowie, because Bowie's in space, hmm. from Flight of the Concords. Look it up. <laughs> we have a pogo plug and 300 viewer points for the winner. Pogo plug is a fantastic device. As I was saying, it streams to my iPod Touch. It gives you, basically, for, for my iPod Touch, using that as the scenario for an Android device, for a BlackBerry, whatever, iPhone this lets you plug in, let's say you've got a 500 gig hard drive, mm-hmm. USB. You plug it into the Pogo plug. Now, your 8 gig iPod Touch has 508 gigs. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so cool. That's to put it, that's just to, that's an entry level as to what this can do. This is a fantastic device. And we're giving away two of them tonight. One of them is going to the winner of the Space Fish contest mm-hmm. based on your votes. I've also got uh, runner-up prizes as well. Second place is going to get 100 viewer points, and third place uh, is 25 viewer points. So our third place winner, maybe you could do a drum roll. Oh, no. That was pretty good. Our third place winner is Catfish from Kodars360 cool. from your votes at Category5.tv. Thank you very much uh, for your submission, uh, Kodars360, and congratulations on your 25 points. Second place. Are you ready? 
With 23.3% of the overall votes, we have C3H2O. Ah. That was submitted by Tordo. <laughs> Congratulations on receiving uh, 100 viewer points. And our grand prize winner tonight for a pogo plug, as well as 300 Ooh. incredible, coveted <laughs> viewer points. The winner with 26.7% of all of the votes that came in to name Spacefish <sighs> is... Anticipation is killing me. Raptor 222. The name of Spacefish <laughs> is now Major Tom. Pretty cool Major Tom. Also. So I kind of won at the same time. Congratulations, Raptor 222. Congratulations to Major Tom, who... Uh, was formerly known. We're going to have to call him formerly known as Spacefish. Congratulations, Raptor 222. Uh, Major Tom, of course, a reference to a uh, David Bowie character. Mm-hmm. So I kind of feel like Bowie's in space kind of got in there and, and, and won even indirectly. But it didn't really. But it didn't really. No. So I guess I'll give him the pogo plug and the 300 points. Congratulations, mm-hmm. Raptor That's 222. Awesome. And uh, thank and you, everyone, for your submissions. Thank you, everybody. Major Tom. Ground control, let's up. And uh, thank you to, uh, to everybody for your votes as well. We had tons of votes on our website, Category5.tv, to determine the name of Space Fish is Major Tom. Mm-hmm. He looks so happy about it. He looks really thrilled tonight now. Look at him. Yeah, he was kind of like hovering at the top before. Now he's like, I have a he's name, like, I have an identity, have I have a purpose. have a purpose in life. Yeah. Yes. Super excited. Thanks to Raptor222. <laughs> well, uh, it is time for the news. I'll let you uh, kind of take that away at this point. Sure. And in the meantime, if you have any questions for us, email us live at category5.tv or join us in the chat room, category5.tv or category5 on Freenode. You can take it away. Great. All right. So from the category5.tv newsroom... The Australian Department of Defense has stepped up its push for open source software to reduce its $100 million, annu- sorry, $100 million annual software licensing bill. Last week, oh. it joined five other government agencies in forming the Open Technology Foundation, which aimed to facilitate collaboration and interoperable technology in the public sector. Already, they have begun testing Open Office as an alternative to Microsoft's expensive Office suite. Defense Chief Technology Officer Matt Yana Polis Mm -hmm. said the department had been considering open source software for more than three years. In accordance with the new policy, defense tender documents now explicitly stated that it would consider open source software options alongside proprietary products, acknowledging that open source suppliers may have been held back by smaller marketing budgets when bidding for government tenders in the past. Time will tell what the Open Technology Foundation will mean for open source projects and the overall open source movement. We all know it was coming. The $25 Linux computer called Raspberry Pi. And mm. if the name didn't give away, like, isn't that just, just saying that should be a giveaway right there. In the $25 package, they squeezed in a fully configured ARM-based 1080p compatible mini motherboard. The device is still in development, and only a few days ago, the alpha version of the board was demonstrated running Quake 3. Raspberry Pi is a nonprofit organization from the United Kingdom aiming to develop an extremely low cost ARM motherboard, which can be used to develop cheap yet powerful hardware for de- developing markets while also providing a cheap but powerful motherboard to hack around with. Their first product is about the size of a credit card. Even though it produces 1080p video at 30 frames per second via HDMI or composite with an impressive 700 megahertz ARM 2, 11, sorry, processor and at, la- at least 128 megabytes of RAM. I am having difficulties. Raspberry Pi is slated to be released in the fourth quarter of this year. So it's all the talk of Raspberry Pi. You're like, mm-hmm. I know, I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't I want a Raspberry I didn't have Pi supper now. before I came here, so oh, I'm going to go home and make a raspberry pi Mm -hmm. rhode island attorney peter naronha told the wall street journal that incriminating emails had been uncovered as part of an official investigation showing that google's chief executive larry page knew that advertisements for unlicensed canadian pharmacies were running on its u.s site the search giant agreed last week to pay 500 million dollars or 306 million pounds to settle the case 
It declined the comment on the specifics of the allegations, but instead issued a statement reiterating its regret about what happened, saying, with hindsight, we never should have allowed those ads on Google in the first place. Hmm. Well, you know what they say about hindsight. I'm <laughs> saying, in a first of its kind deal, Microsoft has entered... Oh, sorry. In a first of its kind deal, Microsoft has entered into a joint agreement with China's leading domestic Linux operating system provider to together provide cloud services across both Microsoft and Linux platforms. The agreement with China's standard software company, CS2C, a government-owned Linux provider, was announced last Monday. It's the first time Microsoft has partnered to provide cross-platform cloud services in an emerging economy, said Sandy Gupta. Gupta. General Manager at, of Microsoft's Open Solutions Group. And while Microsoft has many partnerships in China, this is the first time it's partnered with the provider of what's essentially a competing platform, Gupta said. You have to stop writing these difficult names in here. Sorry, it is Gupta. Gupta, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. The Department of Defense are putting a push on the use of open source software in government agencies. The mixed source solutions stemming from this collaboration will be built on Microsoft's Hyper-V open cloud architecture and will include support to run CS2C Neo Kylin Linux server products, according to the Microsoft news release. Gupta. Is that Ni Hao Kylan Linux Ni Hao, server? I, <laughs> <laughs> Every parent out there hmm. heard that that way. Well, Sorry. You hear it as you will. That's unreal. That's unreal. So the things Robbie writes for me, and then I read them, and then I get heckled for it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking uh, about. So anyways, Gupa, Gupta declined to disclose the, issue, the details of the legal covenant agreement that the two parties signed. Mm. Whew. An online community used by developers of Nokia phone apps has been hacked. The company warned that members' personal information, including dates of birth and email, email addresses, may have been stolen. Oh no. Nokia's developer forms have been temporarily shut down while the security breach is investigated. Nokia said, initially, we believe that only a small number of these four members' records have been accessed, but further investigation has identified that the number is significantly larger. The company said that no credit card details had been taken, but warned that additional contact details, such as Skype addresses, may have been stolen. I think that's bad news, regardless of Ooh. how many people's content has been yeah. has been taken. I think it's still a big deal. Let's see. The world witnessed the passing of an era last Wednesday. Oh, this is a sad story. Everyone be prepared. I have to. You know, I agree. I'll let you tell the story. Okay, but I and agree. then we'll reminisce. Okay. Yeah. So when, when Apple CEO Steve Jobs officially resigned and named Chief Operating Officer Timothy Cook as his successor, Jobs, who battled pancreatic cancer and had a liver transplant in 2009, was on medical leave since January and has concluded that he could no longer continue to fulfill his duties with Apple. Steve Jobs has been called a revolutionary and a visionary, whatever you want to call it. He shaped the world of media and entertainment, and as a result, Apple became the standard of several sectors of technology, including MP3 players, cell phones, and laptops, and PCs, as well as creative software such as InDesign and GarageBand. Jobs is also responsible for founding Pixar Films in 1986 and turned the then-fledgling fledgling movie studio into a household name. The next few months will say a lot about the influence that Steve Jobs had on Apple. Will Apple continue its tradition of success? We don't know. What are your opinions? Give us a call at the cat phone. Number is 705-739-1056. And let us know what you think. You guys can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. And the category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by Invincible Mutant. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Crystal Wells. What are your thoughts about I am so Steve? sad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, guy, the poor guy has been battling this or that mm -hmm. medical condition over the past several years. Um, he really was, I don't know if it's single-handedly, but he's given the credit for basically taking Apple yes. from a failing company that could have failed and turning mm -hmm. it into uh, something spectacular. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all of a sudden, Apple is back in in the game and they're huge what are your thoughts uh, call us on the uh, on the cat phone 705-739-1056 we'd love to hear from you tonight uh with regards to uh, steve jobs leaving apple 
I think for me, what it what it says about the whole era of personal computers is that while Steve Jobs has said for for many years that okay, well the PC versus Mac battle is over because Microsoft won is what Steve Jobs has said. Um, they decided to you know invest in things like the iPod Touch, the iPhone, the iPad, and devices that have mm-hmm. revolutionized the MacBook Pros and and revolutionizing that type of device. I guess you would call it an appliance as opposed to a computer. Mm-hmm. So um, I think as far as historically goes, I think you know Bill Gates and Steve Jobs right at the forefront in the early times of computing when I was just getting started. It's sad to see that coming, th- that whole era coming to a close, with Steve leaving. Uh, Bill, of course, retired several years ago, mm-hmm. but um, uh, it's a sad time, I think. Well, and maybe it's not as bad as we think. I mean, it's always sad yeah. to hear when someone um, has health issues, but sure. for the company, he's an, maybe, old, he's an old man too. Yeah, maybe like, his successors have been with the company long enough. Maybe they're in the same kind of mind frame. Maybe mm-hmm. they can bring Apple along just as well as Steve Jobs had. And that's the hope, I suppose. Yeah, eh? uh, for for Apple and for uh, Apple fans is that uh, that is it, Tim. So, Timothy Cook, I believe. Tim Cook, uh, th- that he would take over and, and still kind of continue on in that visionary mm-hmm. role. Whether or not that's possible, I don't know. I don't know the guy. But, um, yeah, I Time mean, Steve, is, Steve <laughs> has really been a visionary, I think, with, with the company. Uh, does anyone want to give us a call? 705-739-1056. We'll just give you a couple of minutes to give us a ring. Because we don't have lag tonight. So um, if you have an opinion with regards to Steve Jobs leaving Apple, we'd love to hear from you. Come on. There we go. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Chris is posting the wrong. I mess up phone phone numbers all the time. You don't know how many times on my voicemail I leave the wrong phone number. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) To people. Yeah, and I have to call back. Yeah. Thanks for calling Category 5 Technology TV. This is Robbie. Who's this? Hey, uh, Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Uh, 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 Hey, Jameson. Oh, hey, Jameson. (laughs) Where are you calling from? Just for the sake of the viewers? Uh, Michigan. From Michigan. Nice to have you calling us tonight. Do share your thoughts about uh, about Steve Jobs and his departure from uh, from Apple. Well, I think probably the funniest thing in that whole situation is that uh, he started uh, Apple and then they kicked him out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he didn't even come back to Apple until uh, they started buying out all the companies that he started after he left. Yeah. Well, he started up next, right? He started up next, and then they went and bought next, and he became absorbed into their company. Right. So he got kind of placed back from uh, the head of the company again, mm-hmm. and brought it back from the brink of disaster then. So you should kind of have foreshadowed and seen what happened when Jobs was in the picture before. So let's just hope that it doesn't go that, that route again. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Andrew, thank you very much for your call. Um, I do hope that uh, that Apple will, you know, that that uh, whoever comes in and, and takes over will uh, will still uh, be able to maintain the uh, the company and, and the progress that they've made. So, but uh, thank you very much for making this call. All right, talk to you later. Cheers, Andrew. We did. Uh, we experienced a little bit of lag there, and that's why I was a little bit mm-hmm. uh, not stuttered. nearly as bad as twenty-three not as, minutes. Not though. as bad. No. Yes. Just a couple of moments. <laughs> Just a couple of moments. Thank you for the call, Andrew. Appreciate that very much. Uh, and if you would like to give us a call, let us know what you think about uh, Steve Jobs departing from Apple. We would love to hear from you. Of course, uh, you know, I'm a Linux user, mm-hmm. and so I've never been an Apple follower in regards to their products or their their product line. Mm-hmm. But I recognize it's got it's got such a place in the market. It's got such a um, as an appliance, like the mm-hmm. iPod Touch, has been fantastic for me. Being able to check my email and stuff like that. It's its a pretty handy device. Mm-hmm. Well, it's funny. Even people who say that they are not within the Mac fad, but yet there's so many people that do have either the iPhone or an iPod Touch or something, and they don't really consider that as part of the Apple, mm-hmm. the whole umbrella. But there are so right. many people affected by it still. So. Definitely, definitely. 
Tonight's episode is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug at cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug and by Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. You're watching Category 5 Technology TV. Uh, you can find us online, www.category5.tv. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. Tonight, I'd like to look at a Linux tool, mm -hmm. which if you're new to Linux, if you've never used Linux, or if you're just considering it, or you're not too sure what it can do for you, Linux is a different operating system. It's something alternative to Mac OS or Windows, uh, which you can install on your PC hardware, is, uh, you know, to put it at its most simplest form. You can download it. It's free. That's one of the advantages, but it's got a ton of free software available for it. And what's cool about Linux is that you can now, over the you know, with with uh, the progression of Linux over the past several years, there's always been this tool called Wine. It's a Windows API layer that you can add to Linux. And with that application, with the progress of that application over the past several years, we've seen it come from something that could possibly run your Windows programs to something that runs a lot of Windows programs very, very well. Head on over to winehq.com to find out what applications are indeed compatible with Wine. And once you've got Linux installed, you can actually uh, grab a Windows program. I'm going to use WinApp as an example. It's a media player that's popular on the Windows platform. If I go free download from winapp.com, you'll see something here. It's available in multiple languages, but it's only available on Microsoft Windows. Well, that's a problem for us because we're on Linux. Mm -hmm. Is it really a problem for us? No, because I've installed what's called Wine. You'll find it in your repositories. W-I-N-E, just like the beverage. And th what it does, again, is it gives us the ability to run several Windows programs on your Linux machine. Very cool. I'm just downloading uh, that file. 15 megs. So then this is kind of a, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but like a solution opposed to partitioning your hard drive. Oh, yeah. And having Windows installed on part of it. Yeah, definitely. This allows you to have um, Windows programs running natively into Linux. That's kind of cool. Right. Yeah. So it's really neat. It's different than virtualization. It's different than dual booting. Mm -hmm. Virtualization, you have to actually bring up a Windows machine in order to run the Windows application. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas with this, you're actually literally able to run that application. So I've downloaded the program. So it's now uh, available to me. I've got the executable. You'll see that this is indeed winapp.exe. That's a Windows executable. On Linux now that I've got, because I've got Wine installed, I can right click on that and go properties. Remember, this is a Windows executable. I'm going to go permissions and then allow executing file as program. And check that off. Now I'm going to close that window. And now all I have to do, just like as if I was sitting on a Windows computer right this very moment, and here I am in Linux, remember that this is indeed Linux, right? You can tell by the wobbliness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to double click on that file. What does it look like? It looks just like a Windows installer. I'm going to hit OK. Welcome to the WinApp installer. Next. End user license agreement comes up just as normal. Of course, you've read that and you're going to agree with it. Otherwise, you can't install. Install to where? C colon slash program files slash WinApp. Well, we don't have a C drive. We're on Linux. That's OK. It's going to mimic that behavior for you. What do we want to do? We'll install the light, light version just to make it quick. Next, WinApp, what do you want to do? Won't install it on Quick Launch. We will create a desktop icon and a start menu entry. What extras do you want? None of these. Don't need any malware or extra stuff. Not that they would distribute such a thing, but okay, all this stuff, it's their way. You know, if you, if you want it, read it, support them. It's a free software. They include those things because that's how they pay for their software. So, oh, what's this? It's done. Launch WinApp after the installer closes. Hit finish. And you see, okay, I've got my settings. Next, whatever, finish. And uh, lo and behold, there's WinApp. A Windows-only mm -hmm. multimedia player, which is an executable program. It's an EXE, but it's now running natively within Linux thanks to Wine. 
Neat. So cool. very cool stuff. Again, mm-hmm. you can get Wine if it if it's not actually included with your operating system, uh, with your distribution of Linux. You can get it from any repository. Go into Synaptic Package Manager. Go into whatever you use, and install W I N E, and that's going to give you the ability to run those Windows programs just like I just did. WineHQ.org. Once again, that's the website where you can you know, punch in your application and see, does it work with Wine? Can you run it natively in Linux without having to have virtualization? Head on over to our website, category5.tv. Of course, when we get this kind of traffic as we have tonight, uh, you may have to refresh a couple of times, and I apologize for that. Sometimes it happens. Uh, we have a ton of traffic on our website tonight, as you can imagine, during a live broadcast. Uh, but we are about to enter into our first ever what I anticipate to be a successful click race. (laughs) So head on over to category5.tv. You have to be logged in to the website. Make sure you check off that box that says, Remember Me. You don't want to miss out on uh, your ability to race in click race. And once you're on our website, refresh a couple times if you need to. You'll see an icon on the front page that says click race. And when you're there, click on that if you're logged into the website. You have to be logged in, otherwise you won't even see the button. And that's your chance to join us for Click Race tonight. The grand prize tonight is going to be a pogo plug. Oh, We're two giving pogo away, plugs? Yeah, two pogo plugs in one night. What that's the rollover the from last week. And we've also got 100 viewer points for the runner-up. And the third place winner is going to get 25 viewer points. Cool. Very exciting stuff. Start stretching your clicker fingers yep. right now. Get ready to click in Click Race. Here we go. Hopefully everything will work out all right. We've got a ton of traffic on the website, though. It makes me nervous because uh, hopefully our web host is able to, uh, to keep up with everything. Click Race is starting now. Category5.tv. Welcome to George B., A. Jameson, uh, AS759, and Sprint Cowboy. We have room for two more contestants on Click Race tonight. Ready to go. All you have to do is log into our website, Category5.tv. Click on Click Race. And that's your chance to, uh, to participate. Mm-hmm. If you're having trouble with the website, make sure you hit refresh. 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 Sounds like a drink. And <laughs> Yeah. And make sure you also are logged into the site. If you're not logged in, you will not see the button. You won't be able to join the game. All right. We have maxed out our contestants. Get clicking, everybody. It is time for Click Race, our first ever... We've got George B, Raffer, A. Jameson, AS759, Sprint Cowboy, and Tordo are ready to race. Get clicking, my friends. Oh, my goodness. From all over the world, here we go. It's time for Click Race. Playing a game tonight for a Pogo Plug, and uh, this is uh, going to go out to you no matter where in the world you are. Raffer, so far, is in the lead with 29% of the clicks. Oh, my A. Jameson is uh, right behind him. Where's Sprint Cowboy? Is it... Uh, Lead on the drive. Click, click, click. Come on, Sprint Cowboy. Hit refresh if you have any kind of trouble. Just hit refresh, Troy74, if you need to. The game has begun, so we're good to go. Well, we've got uh, AS759, who has uh, taken over the lead. 25% of the clicks. Pretty close, though. Got Rafa right behind. Here we go. Oh, there's Tordo at the bottom. He's busy in the lead right now. Sprint Cowboy, where are you, my friend? Sprint Cowboy, if you're having any kind of trouble, just hit refresh on Click Race. You are in the game. You can get clicking. Takes time. It's tough stuff. Click, click, click. No one's ever had to click this much before. I know, they're clicking like crazy. I know they are. What happens if your clicker finger seizes up? Well, Maybe that's what happens to Spring Cowboy. Spring Maybe Cowboy. he was practicing too much beforehand. Yeah. I and hope now that, he's all seized up. I hope that uh, that you're not having trouble there, Spring Cowboy. And of course, they're not going to respond to us in the chat room because you're clicking like crazy. Too Oh, it's pretty close. We've got about uh, 15 seconds left to click race. We've got Tordo oh, now good. in the lead. AJ okay, Jameson, Jameson close behind. Things are really picking up now. Okay, we're going to give this about 30 seconds, actually, if, if things keep up this way. I want to give you a chance to catch up here. Come on, Sprint Cowboy. Where are you, my friend? 
We've got A.J. Emerson in the lead, holding on to that lead. Torto close behind. Oh, George B. is slowly catching up. Oh, you never know. Click and click him. Click real it could hard. Be anybody's and, race right now, come on. You are about to win a pogo plug. It could be A. Jameson, it could be Tordo, or it could be Rapper coming up from behind. We got George B as well, is right there. AS759 is working on those clicks as well. But it's, uh, it's old oh, George oh, B is taking over the second place. Tordo. We've got How does that 10, 9, oh, look, 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 look. 8, 7, 6, oh, it's so 5, close. 4, 3, Two, one, and the winner of the wow. Club tonight on our first ever successful click race, <laughs> A. Jameson. By two clicks. By two clicks? Is it that close? It is that close. Unbelievable. George B. is our runner-up in second place, and then it looks like we have... A tie. Tordo. No, Tordo. Has oh, got 31 clicks in. So we've got A.J. Amison has got a pogo plug, 300 viewer points. And then we also have uh, behind uh, A.J. Amison, we've got George B. with 100 viewer points and Tordo with 25 viewer points. Woo-hoo. Congratulations, <laughs> A.J. Amison. The song paid off. The phone call paid off. You. Were, this is your is. show. This is your is that show, buddy. That favoritism, then, if you sing songs to <laughs> somebody that, and then they win a pogo. Is plug? that how it works? I'm just wondering if that's how that. Next week, everyone's going to hmm. call because they want to win a pogo plug. I mean, you should Completely sing to everybody. Related, but it's, it's got to be something to do with, you know, it's A. Jameson's show. Look at that. Congratulations! Thanks for participating in the show, everybody. Uh, been a lot of fun tonight. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I actually forgot something. Um, you know, last week I was saying that we should be a little more jazzy with our awesome new headphones. Jazzy. And I think they're just a little bit too plain. So I actually went oh. out. I spent a hundred of my pennies. And a hundred whole pennies. I got what this. They are stickable rhinestones. So maybe next week. Sweet. Bring them over. It can look a little more dolled we, up. Can I open these up? Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> look at this. Now we are genuine pop stars, my mm. friends. What am I supposed to do with this? I think, I, well, I, I didn't really think out how they would work. Oh, I just okay. know they're adhesive. Okay. I'm going to go with a manly purple. Of course. So this is supposed to go on my mic. I think. And I don't know if it'll work or not. Did it work? Is it glistening? Oh, that is nice. See? That is so much Isn't better. that manly? Lovely. Thank you very much. You know, anytime. I think I could do to help. <laughs> just a rhinestone cowboy. <laughs> Boy, oh boy. Well, hey, thanks for joining us tonight. Successful thanks for the Successful night. Yeah, yeah, you have fun? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah? Good. I always have fun. Good, good. Nice to have everybody joining us from all over the world. It was interesting to see where everybody's from. Uh, congratulations again to our winners tonight. We've given away two pogo plugs, a whole bunch of viewer points. Uh, thank you for sending in your viewer pictures. You can mm-hmm. send those in to live at category5.tv for a quick way to get 100 viewer points. Uh, also, I had mentioned... Send us a postcard in the post. You'll see our address, our mailing address is actually on the bottom of every single page on category5.tv, or you can go mm-hmm. to contact us and uh, send us a postcard with your, you know, a picture of your local city or state, uh, country, whatever, you know, something that reminds you of home and uh, write something nice on the back and send it our way. And uh, I'll be happy to uh, to give you some viewer points for that. And, and I think that would be really nice for us to receive some snail mail for all for a while it's been, That'd be uh, really cool. it's been a long time it's almost like we're working backwards and getting yeah. snail mail is so amazing and unbelievable there's something about opening the mailbox though and there's something there that just says mm-hmm. hey i just thought i'd send you a letter you know they used to call it fan mail or whatever <laughs> way back in the day it was just it was just like you know open the mailbag and here's a letter uh we've had uh we've had some very interesting stuff sent to us in the past uh, but because we haven't mm. made mention of the postal box in a very long time, you just forget about I guess it. Yeah. yeah, it just kind of tapers off, and eventually the yeah. you know it dies off, and you know it's been a few months, and we haven't received anything uh, from viewers. Mm-hmm. So we um, do have postal service in Canada. We sure do. It's uh, it's a little slow, a little unreliable, uh, but uh, it gets here usually. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, give it a try. <laughs> Sound good? Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Krista. Nice to have you here. Oh, it's always great to be here. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, a very fun month of September as well. I don't know if you know this or not, but we're coming up on our our fourth anniversary. Uh, Season 5 of Category 5 TV starts uh, late next month. So very excited about that. It's hard to believe uh, so much time has gone by. We've got some hardware that came in for the new server. 
um, parts okay. of it. It's not all here, but uh, most of the stuff that, that we ordered with donated funds uh, has arrived. So uh, so I, I simply wanted to say, like I, I've said it before, and, and it starts, to, I, I hope it doesn't start to sound redundant, but it really, you know, when we opened that box last night, it's like, the viewers purchased this stuff mm -hmm. to replace the damaged hardware, and, and it means so much to myself, to everyone who's involved in the show, that, that you stand by us like that. So uh, so I actually recorded the unboxing video, and unboxing is incredibly boring to me, so uh, <laughs> I figure it's pretty, um, pretty boring to most other people. So I didn't include it in the show tonight, but I did put it up um, so that those of you who would really like to see the unboxing video and see the hardware as we open the box, um, that's that's available to you uh, that will be on category 5.tv under watch the show and uh, features uh, you'll be able to find that but you can also find it on our blip site it's blip.tv slash category 5 that's where it is right now so cool cool thanks everybody for all the fun tonight have a wonderful week thanks krista yeah I'll see you everybody yeah. i guess and uh thanks major tom <laughs> It's been fun. Oh, he looks happy with his new name. He looks so happy. Mm -hmm. Good job. We'll see you next <laughs> Tuesday night. This is a live broadcast that goes forth every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern, and we look forward to having you here. Join us on our website. It's a free service. Uh, make sure you register so you can participate in some of the cool contests that we have. Category5.tv. And we'll see you next Tuesday night. Sounds good. See have you, everyone. Bye-bye.